All right, welcome to this tutorial. I haven't made a tutorial in a long time, but I'm going to try to make it as concise as possible. So this tutorial is focused on teaching you how to use scriptable objects as a database. And uh, the first thing that we're going to go through is how to create an item for the database, then create you know, the database script itself, then the scriptable object, and then we're going to use that database for, you know, uses for things um so this is being recorded live at twitch.tv slash natural power games so if you want to come here i do these things all the time I, I teach people and i make games which use scriptable objects and many other quote unquote advanced features of unity so let's get started the first thing that we're going to do is uh, talk about this project this project is already pre-started um, I have art, but you know, just one little art piece. I have materials created. I have some prefabs, which is they're going to be my items. Um, I have, um, you know, the scripts are pre-created, but they're not filled out except one of them, which I usually forget. So I don't want to, you know, spend ten minutes thinking. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So to start with the scripts, the first thing that we're going to create is the item. So my item is going to be an empty class. We're gonna just we're gonna grab one of these mono behavior classes and we're gonna delete all of those things and we're gonna just keep these. So the first thing that we need to have is the name of the item. So we're gonna have a name. The second thing that I want to have is the type of the item. So I'm gonna have a public item type and we're gonna call it item type. And for now, this is not going to work, quote unquote, but we will fix it later. Then we're gonna have a sprite for the item. And you see that I can't use the word sprite, and that's because I don't have the Unity engine using. So we're gonna add that real quick up top. So just add using Unity engine. That is very important for these kind of things. And then the last thing that we need is to add the prefab. So we need a game object prefab, of course. This depends on the way that you're going to use your item. So in general, this works. So an item type, if we go to the item type script, which I have open right here, if you go to the item type script, you will see that I, it, it doesn't have much information. So the first thing that we need to do is delete all of these things, not that, and then delete the mono behavior from it. And then we're going to make it into an enumerator. If you don't know what a numerator is, an enumerator is basically a, a glorified list of things. Um, and this allows us to divide our, our item into different uh, items into different types. So I'm going to show you which uh, prefabs I created. I created four prefabs. I created a capsule, a cube, a cylinder, and a sphere. So those are going to be my item types. So we're going to have a capsule, cube, sphere, and what was the other thing? I have no idea a cylinder yeah cylinder goes before sphere just keeping the alphabetical order here so with this we have our item type so each item will have the data required to to so so that we know what item type is and we're going to see how this works in a second but the the most important part of this or a very important part of this is that you make this a serializable class so that it shows in the inspector. So you have to make a system that's serializable. Now, the next thing that we want to have, we already have our item and we have our item type right here. I'm gonna close the item type script because we don't need it anymore. Now, the item data is currently a mono behavior. We're going to change it to a scriptable object. This is our database. And you will find it very interesting that the database is just a list of items. That's it. That's all the database does for now. So we're gonna have items here, and we're gonna say that it's equal to a new list just to prevent the error where the list, you know, there's an error that gets thrown by Unity when the lists are null. So um, there's another important thing here. We can cheat the system by adding a reference to this list like this. So we have, we can say public item, item of type, and we retrieve the item with an item type, item type. And so we can do return items and we ingress the item type into the list. Item type. And you will see that unit is complaining. We just say int. So all you have to do is make sure that the list 
has the item placed at the right position in the list. Um, the item type other uh, that is very important. The item type class can be different. It can be like offensive, defensive, and you here you have different lists for each of those types: the offensive, defensive, consumables, whatever you need. Uh, they can be used here. Okay, so now that we have our database ready, we can go to create item data. So create item data is a script that must be placed in scripts in some folder called editor because it will modify the behavior of the Unity editor. It has to be in an editor folder here. So I have this commented out. I will explain how this works. Oops. I will also I will talk about it so that you can copy this. So the first thing you need to have is um, the knowledge that you have to have menu items here so that this what this will do is it will allow me to right click and go to create and you will see here item data is now in the bottom. I can of course organize this. I can change this name. You can see you can see here that I, I assign the name item data. I can give it a space maybe if I wanted to. The item data name, you assign it right here. You create the type of object. Then you create the actual object and you place it in a folder of your preference. So my folder that I'm going to use is scriptable objects, zero asset. And we will save that and then it will take us, it should take us to the asset. Sometimes it doesn't. So now that you have seen this, this is a very standard, um, create scriptable object script. You should just memorize this. I, I will probably link this in the description of the video, but yeah, we need this. You will use this all the time. So I'm gonna go right click, create item data. And you will see that it took me to the item data. And right here on the right side, we have a list of items with a zero value. And I have four items and we have element zero and we can choose the item type here the sprite and the prefab. So for the prefab, I have a capsule, I will call it capsule. And for the sprite, I will choose any sprite, I don't mind much. Uh, this thing doesn't have capsule, so I'll just pick that. Now the second one, cube, we will do the same thing. Uh, there's a cube though. So we can continue adding things here. So you manually add all the elements in your cylinder, in your list. Of course, again, if this was called weapons, uh, the cylinder, you know, the item wouldn't be called the same as the type sphere, right? And we find there's no sphere here, so I'll just pick, you know, the star, and then we click and we grab the sphere here. So now I have my database ready. So that's the way you create a database. Basically, the tutorial for the database itself is over, but now we'll teach you how to use the database. And you see that, you know, this is just a plain. But now we'll right click and I'm going to create an empty object and I'm going to call it item generator. And as I mentioned before, I already created the item generator script just to save time. So I'm going to drag and drop it here and it's empty. So I'm going to have a public item data, item data here. So that way we can assign our item data in the, there you go. So we can just assign the item data here. And I'm going to generate each item at a different position. So I'm going to grab some positions here. So public transform positions. And of course, this is going to be an array. And we're going to grab four positions and we're going to implement or add each of the items in a different location. So we're going to just we're going to create four empty game objects. We're going to call it item position. And we're going to create four of them. And we are going to divide them, you know, move them a little bit. So item position zero is here, one, two will remain there, and three will go a little long. You know what? I'm going to move to a little. There you go. And then we will lock this, select all of them by hitting shift, drag and drop, and we have our four item position. So on start, we will go ahead and say four. 4 int i, i is less than positions.length. And we will say, we will instantiate one of the items at each position. So here, what we do is we say uh, game object item equals instantiate, oops, instantiate. 
And you remember how I mentioned that you can grab an item by the item type, but we can also grab it by int. So we can say, well, yeah, so I, we can say parenthesis, and this will be item type so that it converts the I to item type. And we will say dot prefab. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, so I, I forgot to do this. Item data dot item of type. We do parenthesis and we convert that and we will make it. Uh, so instantiate takes two factors. The first one is the original object, which is this, and then the parent, and the parent is positions of I. And now we just say item that transform the local position equals vector three dot zero, so that it centers the item in the middle of the parent. Uh, it's complaining about something. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, prefab. So this way we are absorbing the prefab, right? Okay, cool. so as now when I hit play, I should see the four items being generated, hopefully. There you go. So we have the four items are being generated. My plane is too high, so I'm gonna move it down a little. And you can see that my database successfully generated all four items. And all I had to do was this. So if you need to have, for example, item drops, you can go ahead and plug that into your item data, your item database, you can have it be public static. For example, you can have this be a public static item data so it's accessible from anywhere with, as, a, as a global, or you can do whatever you need. So this is a very basic implementation of the, of the thing, but you know, it works. So I will do the same thing now for the, for the UI. So the, with this code that I'm going to write right now, you will be able to implement, I'm gonna use in Unity engine, so you will be able to implement your items as UI sprites or UI buttons, whatever you want. So as I'm using Unity Engine that UI, I'm going to have a public image array. It's going to be item displays. Let's call it that. And I will grab the database here, public item data, item data. And usually, you know, usually it is not the wisest thing to do to have it everywhere. But that's why I'm saying you can have it as a you can have it as a global, you can have any events related to it where you need them. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a UI, uh, just an empty UI object. Uh, I'm just gonna create a panel. I'm gonna double click it and we see that this is my panel. And I'm going to add the, here I'm gonna unlock, I locked this before. And I'm going to add a component called the UI display controller for the items. The, I'm going to add the item data in the inspector. And the item displays, I need four of them, of course, because I have four items, right? So I'm going to lock this and I'm going to go ahead and here, I'm going to create four images. I'm going to create four of these and I'm going to move them. Uh, yeah, that's way too, too much to the right. So I'm just going to move this lightly and remember this is being recorded live at twitch.tv natural power games anytime you need anything just come over and i will help you so here we have four images ready drag and drop into my item display so don't forget i locked so i was able to do that and now when i go to my display controller i can do basically the same thing so i will say for each of these so item displays dot length we will grab the item display. So I'm gonna say item displays, I mean, I dot sprite equals, and we're gonna say item data dot item of type, and the type is going to be I, and it has sprite. So we just convert, we convert the I to item type, and we grab the sprite from that item in the database. And with that, we will check out, we will stop coding and we'll hit play and see what happens. Wait a second, Unity has to start. And you see that my items sprites were generated in the scene. And also I generated the, uh, I need to move the plane again, sorry. Um, I generated the objects here and I generated the image here. 
So this can be used for so many things. This can be used for enemy enemy prefabs. This can be used for um, item process, obviously for items, but it could be like for projectile types like arrows or fireballs, or for it can be used for um, basically anything that you can think of, particles maybe. Um, and this can be, you know, this can this doesn't have to be called item. It can be called enemy it can be called uh, whatever you want and also it, this can have calculations so you could have a you know a public float damage and you know have this item have a level maybe public float or rather in level and so with this you can return we can you can return level times five or something so that you have calculations inside your item, making your item a more dynamic class. So with that, I, I think this tutorial is over, only 15 minutes. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to, um, if you need anything, you can comment here or just go to the Twitch channel and I will help you as much as I can. Let's check out rights again with my database, my beautiful item database working. So that's it. Thank you for watching.